Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zeal here with my friend who is called uh, Mango Butter. Get a close up on him. I want to give a um, little overview of what this is, uh, why it's important, um, why are they <clears throat> um, being sold online for um, sometimes kind of cheap, sometimes outrageous prices. Um, you know, why should you be concerned um, that these things are out here if you don't know what they are? Well, um, in just a few sentences, what a Pentagonchi is, uh, the short version is it's a cybersecurity pen testing slash hacker type tool um, that you could create yourself or you could buy it. And basically what it does is it feeds off of Wi-Fi networks and um, collects these things called handshakes. And with those um, files that are created and gathered from those handshakes, um, an individual can attempt to crack those keys to possibly get um, yours or someone's um, Wi-Fi password. Um, <clears throat> how it does it, uh, that's a little bit more complex and a little bit more um, in depth, but basically it uses um, various algorithms and um, other techniques. It also uses this API called FetterCap, and um, I'll post a link down to down below. Um, but basically, what FetterCap is, it's a suite of Wi-Fi um, <clears throat> and Bluetooth uh, tools that allows an individual to do a host of things. Um, there is Bluetooth HID, which is human inter interface um, device, you know, so this um, Pinagachi can act as a keyboard, mouse, uh, what have you. Obviously it can scan for Wi-Fi networks, scan for Bluetooth um, devices, um, sc uh, scan for clients on those devices, it could do a whole bunch of things. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, there's a lot of things that I'm not even aware um, that it can do. Yeah, there's a host of things uh, that it can do, and it's kind of in a way similar to um, Pokemon Go, but instead of you know trying to catch Pokemons, uh, you're trying to catch these handshakes. And basically what a handshake is, is anytime any device tries to connect to a Wi-Fi network, there has to be some sort of authentication process. And um, <clears throat> most cases, it does something that's called a four-way handshake. So the device and the network or the access point um, do this authentication uh, procedure. And there are ways, which is where this Pentagachi comes into place, um, to intercept or listen or force an individual to make this type of authentication and you intercept and take those um, uh, keys, these authentication keys, which um, are stored in a certain format, which is then uh, saved in um, this Pentagachi's logs. So if you're not really aware of um, you know, certain network protocols and stuff. And <clears throat> what are these files? You know, you're, you're maybe not aware about Linux and Wireshark and Hashcat and all of these other tools, which I'll uh, link down below. Um, you're not really gonna get the full use of this. Um, so if you do do some extra research and reading, you can um, get a lot more out of uh, this tool. Um, there's a lot of cool plugins and <clears throat> extra modifications that people have made um, to this Pentagachi since it is an open source project, um, which I highly recommend you check out. And uh, there's also a really um, <clears throat> big community too as well, um, because you're probably going to run into a lot of issues and um, trouble. But I wanted to give a closer look at uh, my setup. And um, I also do have some cases, but I, I really don't use the case um, at the moment. And I'm going to probably print a um, more custom case because the case that I have 
I'll show, um, <clears throat> which is something you really want to be aware of if you're buying your case uh, separately, that, um, you know, you really want to be aware of your, your build and the actual dimensions. So, um, yeah, let's take a closer look. So here we have the Pinagachi and the um, basic UI. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a uh, pretty cute little guy and it's looking around and we have different things on this uh, interface. So here we have the channel that is currently on and here um, you could see that it's um, actively associating to different devices and stuff. And here it shows how many active um, access points are currently being uh, seen on this channel. And as you can see, it just uh, deassociated or deauthenticated. <clears throat> and this is how many um, that it's seen total. Here we have the Bluetooth connection, and um, I'll show a screen capture of what. Um, the Bluetooth uh, web UI looks like. Here we have the uptime, and this is an extra um, add-on you can do, so you can see the stats of your um, Pinagachi and your Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. Here we have uh, pwned. So pwned means uh, how many um, handshakes it's successfully acquired. Um, so not only has it <clears throat> uh, scanned for um, devices, it's gotten the handshakes and it's gotten enough data to um, be sure that that might be a, a positive handshake. And then here we have the AI mode, which um, allows those algorithms to help out. So this is uh, my build that I did with this. Um, here, this is a, so this is like a fully portable um, device right here. So we got the um, Pi Sugar um, lithium ion battery, and it's, um, as you can see, 1200 mAh, which is about a few hours. Um, I, I feel like if you're out and about and it's doing a lot of work and getting a lot of handshakes, you know, you, you probably got about two hours <laughs> or so, and you probably should charge it as often as you can. Um, but you know, on an average use case, it probably goes for a few hours, like six hours. Um, so the battery is on the bottom and then sandwiched in between is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, so, um, if you're not familiar, this is what Raspberry Pi, uh, Zero Two looks like. And you should get the, um, two, which is much faster. You shouldn't, um, no one should really <laughs> use the the first one, um, if you don't have to, unless you just had one laying around. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this is uh, four gigabytes of RAM, which is more than enough, uh, excuse me, um, I'm not exactly. So uh, this should be uh, more than enough of what you need um, and it has all the ports you need. On top, we have the uh, WaveShare 2.13 inch um, e-ink screen. And these screens are pretty nice. Uh, you could get it for about, you know, 15 to $20. And um, well worth your money. Uh, definitely high quality. And um, you just attach it um, to the pins, as you can see. And yeah, it's pretty um, common build. You know, there are different versions. Some people um, remove certain parts from the screen and the Raspberry Pi Zero, so it's um, much slimmer. Uh, other people use different batteries. Some people use no battery. You don't need to have a battery. Um, you could just uh, use uh, a portable um, battery. You know, you could just power it off of this if you don't want to spend, um, you know, an extra $20, $30 on the Pi Sugar. Um, there are also the uh, UPS hats as well. <clears throat> so there's a lot of different uh, configurations you can do. So this is the uh, main site for uh, Pinagachi. It's just uh, pinagachi.ai. And I uh, 
highly recommend you just go and look through um, just about everything, <laughs> every aspect of this site. Um, if you have any issues, it probably will be there. And um, if you're thinking about getting the Pinagachi, you know, but you want to kind of try it out, um, this is uh, Better Cap. So you go to bettercap.org. And uh, it's open source, you know, so if you have Linux, <clears throat> I highly recommend you um, install this and you can get a really good idea of everything um, it can do. So this is just the web UI that you'll see when you connect to it. And, um, you know, I could go to it. Uh... All right, so I'm connected to, um, the Pinagachi right now. As you can see, it just pawned someone. Um, so here's just a quick little um, overview. Sorry, the quality is not the best. Um, but you got your event log. We have the Wi-Fi log. So as you can see here right now, all of the different um, networks are getting scanned shows the encryption um, and all that BSSIDs and all of that here we can go to uh, Bluetooth and um, I just started scanning for that so um, it shows you too if it's connectable or not And um, here, you, as you can see, you could uh, stop or start the scans. And um, since my Pinagachi was already um, on, this is, I'm just gonna leave that on. So here we have uh, HID. So if you're, um, if you wanna plug that into something, do that. We have the GPS positioning and um, this is something that's really cool that um, I don't think a lot of people talk about or check in on, but there's these things called uh, caplets. And here, as you can see, there's just um, various different scripts or they call them dot caps, caplets. And um, yeah, they do all kinds of things. Um, <clears throat> some of them kind of self-explanatory, but you know, phishing, um, and all sorts of sniffers. Um, so yeah, you know, I recommend you check them out. You know, you probably learn a lot of new things you didn't even know about. And then here, um, we have the, uh, settings. So this is like kind of the brain for your, um, Better Cap API, which is, <clears throat> you know, basically the Pinagachi. You could think of the Pinagachi as just a... Um, carrier for this insane uh, better cap. Um, so yeah, that's uh, the better cap UI 8080. And what's also really cool is that you can see the web UI um, of your Pinagachi <clears throat> as well. And here you can um, just make sure it's working, first of all. And then if you ever needed to safely shut down, um, like I'll do at the end of this, or reboot, or reboot into uh, manual mode, <clears throat> um, you could do it from here safely as well. And they just got some simple things like the inbox. Um, you got your profile. If you wanna share your uh, QR code, you can see uh, any Pinagachi friends and uh, here, this is um, <clears throat> important to just check out, but you have all your settings, um, you know, like if you want Bluetooth enabled and all that. And um, yeah, you might want to uh, turn some things off, turn some things on. Um, like I have it uploading automatically to wiggle.net and, um, you know, you could set up GPIO buttons. Um, 
But yeah, that's the um, tour of what you really need to know. And um, here, I can just uh, shut it down. And then uh, it automatically says good night. And then it just does a safe shutdown. Because I mean, these are Raspberry Pis, so you could just pull the plug out. Um, people have been doing that for decades, or I mean, for years. Um, all right, so that was a um, quick little overview of the Panagachi. Um, I'll definitely go into uh, more in-depth things later, especially um, the most important thing, like what do you do exactly after you get um, your handshakes and um, what are different ways to uh, crack those into possible passwords. And just want to be real, you know, just because you have the handshakes, I think it's like, you know, maybe 23% chance um, <clears throat> overall, as far as all the handshakes that are being cracked right now. Um, you know, it's maybe even like a 10 to 23% chance that that is actually um, the password. Um, so, and sometimes cracking these passwords might take, you know, days, weeks, um, who knows how long for it to maybe be it. Um, but you know, it's something and there are various methods. There's also ways, um, there's also a site where you can upload your handshakes automatically with the Panagachi and they will crowdsource the GPU power to crack, um, your handshake when it comes in queue and they'll email it back to you. Um, that takes a long time, but you know, there's a lot of different tools and options and there's, um, different setups that are quicker than others. And there's also a lot of other things. Like I think a lot of people focus on the pawning part, which is deauthentication and getting handshakes. But I think that's probably 0.2% of what this can um, truly do. So we'll go into that um, a little bit later. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, please leave, <coughs> leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And um, as always, stay peaceful. Peace.